Steve Wendell is the principal scientist at Hello Wallet, where they help people take control of their personal finances. He's also writing a book, Designing for Behavioral Change. Welcome, Steve. Thank you. Glad um, to be here. Let's start by having you describe the general principles of designing for behavior change. Yeah, absolutely. It's really two big things uh, that we look at. First is, what's required for a person to take an action? And then how do you build a product around a particular target action? Something that people want to do, but have struggled with, like exercising or taking control of their finances. Now the what part really draws directly from the psychology of judgment and decision making, behavioral economics, this explosion of research that we've had over the last few years, understanding really just what makes us tick. The first and most important role is in most cases in our daily lives, we're not actually choosing what we do. And our products need to take that into account. Mm -hmm. um, beyond that, we have, to, we have to understand, well, when are we using our intuitive minds? When are we reacting to an environment? And when are we actually making a conscious decision? Too often when we're building our products, we're thinking, oh yeah, that person is reading every darn thing on the page. They're thinking through the whole information architecture. They remember what happened five pages ago, and that just doesn't happen. Right. And so we, we blame our users for being stupid. We blame our users for being lazy and not understanding, mm -hmm. when really, it's our fault as designers. Right. So the second part of the method is really, how do you take that target behavior, like exercising more, mm -hmm. and how do you change the action, so it itself is easier to take, breaking it up into small pieces. How do you then build a product around it, so giving the necessary information, what goes on the page, um, do you use particular behavioral economic tricks like loss aversion, mm -hmm. or, um, or particular framing techniques. And then finally, the third part is, given the action people are taking, and the product, how do you prepare a person to use it? What goes in the marketing, what goes in the emails beforehand mm -hmm. that leads people to get ready for this action. So anyway, right. that's, that's, that's the overview. So I'm assuming people often get it wrong. I think that we do that at O'Reilly. And you know, people are, you know, we get the same type of complaints or questions and mm -hmm. we're thinking, you know, how can we do that better? We think we're being clear. Yeah. We think we're giving yeah. them the right information, but they're still not getting it. What's wrong? How, sure. how, do, we, how do we solve that problem? Sure, well I guess there, there are two things you do, I think most important. The theory helps you get in the right ballpark, right? All of the, what, we, what we've learned from the behavioral economic literature and the psychology literature can tell you, oh, okay, well, looking at these pages, people are distracted here, something else going on. Um, and that, that's, that's the starter, mm -hmm. right? But in often, most cases where, where I deal with companies in our own work, we have a product already and it's just not quite working right. And that's where you need the second part. Right. The second part is, well, you have to test the heck out mm -hmm. of it because human behavior is so complex that there, there are no magic wands that'll right. say, woo, people will click on your link. Right, right. Woo, people will exercise more. That doesn't happen. Instead, we look at how do we use experimental designs? How do we use just dirt, simple, quick, and easy tests mm -hmm. to understand what is the core psychology? And some, are there some of those tests, like you can use heat maps or yep. analytics absolutely, and things absolutely. like that? Absolutely, absolutely. It's just, um, we have these tools already. What I talk about in, in the book is, how do we apply them with an understanding about human behavior? To not just say, oh yeah, people are looking at this part of the page, but why and how can we draw their attention somewhere mm -hmm. else? So some giving you specific things to test with the tools that you already have. So building on people's existing right, expertise. Right. Yeah, I think we, we found that example recently. We were looking at some heat maps and there were drags in the middle of the page, and we're like, why is someone mm -hmm. click, you know, looking at the? They can't be yeah, looking yeah. up the definition of the, and we figured it was a lot of people using tablets, and their fingers uh, were dragging, and that's what we're assuming. Yeah. That, and so it's, there's a lot of difficulties in trying to figure out that behavior. Right, right, and user testing, I mean, we build on the things that we already know. User testing, user research, heat maps, um, A-B tests, simple click tracking mm -hmm. if we're seeing where a person falls off. And the, and the behavioral side really helps you understand why. A lot of the heat maps, et cetera, tell you where, mm -hmm. and the theory is why is that happening and right. what can we do differently? What's an alternative we can use? Great. If that, if that makes sense. True, yeah. So let's, um, could you give me some examples of sort of existing applications that are out there, good things, and you know, oh, yeah. and maybe add a little bit, is, do you think there's a little manipulation going on and is that good? Yeah, sure. So the examples are all around us, and, and I'll be perfectly frank, on the side of good and on the side of not so. Mm -hmm. Okay, and some some of the ones that are they're popular now, Nike Plus Fuel Band, right? Right. Jawbone. Mm -hmm. 
simple examples of products that help us exercise more, right? Fitbit. Right. Um, but beyond that, I mean, it, one of my favorite examples is Clocky. Okay. Clocky okay. is a rolling clock. Normal clocks are not designed to help you wake up, mm -hmm. right? They help you design. They, they're designed so you don't get so darn pissed off the clock that you get rid of it, <laughs> right? That's why they have a snooze button, right? Right. They're Which not helping you wake I up. I usually do three or four right. times in the morning, right? Clocky <laughs> rolls rolls off your desk across the room and just keeps on blaring, so you have to wake up. Mm -hmm. and so that's one of the humorous examples. Right. Now, on the side of everything else, the techniques we're using now, we're playing catch up. To mm -hmm. be perfectly honest. We're playing catch up with what's been known and studied in sales and marketing, and, and sometimes the more manipulative side of, right. of product design for decades. Mm -hmm. So I don't like to pull out particular examples, but we can think of in our society car salesmen. Right, right. How do you sell a person? Do I really lemon? need another yeah. pair of shoes? That's right. <laughs> That's right. I mean, you also think of the placement within grocery stores. Mm -hmm. It's using the same underlying psychology, right? Why? is the candy right when you leave. Mm -hmm. It's because it's when you're tired and you're waiting. And we know that our self-control is much less when we're tired. Right, and the dental floss and the big yeah. drug stores are in the, uh, the last corner that you would get to, right? Right, <laughs> right. So unfortunately, these examples are all around us, mm -hmm. but the really good ones, we don't even notice in our everyday lives. Okay. I think, for example, of defaults. Defaults are one of the most powerful techniques you can, you can use to help a person take a beneficial action. So um, think of cameras. Ten years ago, 15 years ago, cameras, SLR cameras, et cetera, had tremendous number of options. The white balance, the f-stop, all these other things, right? And now, when we take pictures, in most cases, we could muck with all of those. Right, those right. settings are there, but they're intelligently defaulted, mm -hmm. right? They have helped the behavior help a person take a good picture that they don't you know, hate later, and they've just made that problem magically go away. And that's why we don't recognize many of the cases of good design for behavior change in our everyday lives. Mm -hmm. It's because the problem simply magically goes right, away right. unless you're a power user and you want to get into it. Mm -hmm. So we talked about, you know, there's probably a little bit of a dark side. We talked a lot about yeah, good absolutely. things. Yeah. So w are there examples online of sort of these dark side manipulations? Like e-commerce, is that a big one? Um, so e-commerce is a very tricky one, mm -hmm. right? Um, I don't have anything against selling really nice stereos or selling shoes. Right. But sometimes, yeah, they s people sell shoes that we don't really need. Right. Right. They right. make us feel, oh, well, you got to get this thing that matches your outfit. I've never really worked on me, <laughs> heck, but I have one pair Although, of shoes. But I have that problem. Yeah, I have one pair <laughs> of shoes. What can I say? Um, these have certainly been used for ill. I, I wouldn't say all e-commerce because... People do need to buy things, mm -hmm. and there's an important role for helping people buy the things that they actually want to buy right. and making it quick and easy. Mm -hmm. But in our heart of hearts, we know that's not always the case. Right, right. Um, so how would you evaluate your application or your mm -hmm. service or your product? Sure. Um, a lot of people are doing a lot of hardware hacking, and um, we've seen a big sort of surge in taking their, their hardware hacking to a final product, or at least yeah. them trying yeah. to do that. So. How do you evaluate your application for this type of design? Yeah, sure. So um, at, at Hello Wallet, we help people take control of their finances. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's, my, that's my day job. Right. Um, and the way we test it is we do experiments. We do experiments mm -hmm. with outside experts. So we pull in academics, behavioral economists, et cetera, and they test, are people actually saving more? Forget all our arguments. Forget all the things we tell about it. End of the, you know, end of the line, what is actually happening? Mm -hmm. and yes, it does. I mean, that's, and we found cases where we were actually hurting people. Oh, wow. Where we were actually causing them to blow more money than they would otherwise. It happens. That's so, why but at you least test. you test and you yeah, change you your behavior. I mean, and, right. and I think it's, um, it's a problem in our, in our field of this. We're, we're uncomfortable talking about our failures unless they're way, way behind us, mm -hmm. right? Unless they're long stories that we've been talking about. But instead, we're making failures all the time. If we're doing interesting things, we should be failing. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we test and we bring them out and we learn from them, et cetera. Right. And yeah, so what, are those some of the lessons we can learn from behavioral economics and you know, psychology? Does that sort of fall into that realm? Yeah, I think, I think we can learn, yeah, we can learn a number of things. First, that helping people change, and track to change difficult behaviors is possible. 
Happens all the time, right? People do exercise. Mm -hmm. People do. There was a vast sea change in dental habits in this country over the span of 10 years. A, an intentional work of behavior change. Mm -hmm. um, but that while the theory can get us in the right place, we absolutely have to test it. We have to test our products in the field mm -hmm. and see, well, for this particular population, is it working and is it not? Right? And then um, third, it's, it, we have to be humble, and it's related to that, to that testing. In that we never qu quite know, and we try it in a new environment, well, things might change. So when we're using, uh, I guess the, the fourth lesson would be, as we're using behavioral economics and we're using this testing platform, we're not replacing the expertise that people already have mm -hmm. um, as developers, as designers. Um, because you can't have a product that's behaviorally effective if it's ugly and nobody likes it. Right. We build on the techniques of UI of UX, good information architecture. Oh, for that matter, good product management. Mm -hmm. How do you run an efficient team? And add a layer of skill on top of that. So I think those, those are the four lessons okay, great. I really draw. So how does someone get started designing and building products that you know, intentionally change behavior? Sure. So I would say, I mean, there, there's some great books out there on, on the research, on kind of how the mind works. Nudge is a great one that many people have read by Dick Thaler and Cass Sunstein, Predictably Irrational, Dan Ariely's mm -hmm. book. Um, in terms of the, of the applications, well, there really hasn't been um, a gr great resources on the step-by-step -step process. Um, the dis Psychology of Design, Steven Anderson's book is excellent. It's a wonderful place to start. But that's, that's what I actually hope to fill with, with this book, with O'Reilly, okay, is the step-by-step -step process. Worksheets, what do you do? Who's on your team? How do you build the user stories? What does that mean? How do you do the testing? How does this integrate with QC? A lot of detail. Great. So Terrific. So and the book is one way. Great. Yeah. So, so you've given us a lot of you know, resources mm -hmm. in terms of reading and, and sure, becoming familiar sure. with this product. So what's a good tool set to start with? So I, I think people can come from a lot of different places. I think the most natural fit is, is interaction designers. Mm -hmm. But heck. We have folks on our team coming from a product management background that pick this up. We have folks coming from, from a UX, not a specifically interaction design. And myself, I mean, I'm, I'm a researcher by background and have been embedded in a product team for the last four years doing this type of work. So I think it's, it's do you have an existing expertise that you can build on? Because mm -hmm. this doesn't replace it. Okay. So I, I think also what you're saying is you need that you're never done. Yeah. Is that you're constantly checking, testing, reiterating. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, because so you're always learning. Right. Always learning how can you do it better. Right, so that's a good thing to close with. So thank you so much, Steve. Great, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Right. Thank you. Great.